Hey guys, it's Dan Strong with Excel VBA. It's fun back at you again with a quick tip. Uh, we had a question uh, today from Andrew, and he was asking how to make this user form. Let me go ahead and bring up the user form. This user form right here, he wants a loop that's going to go from checkbox 1 all the way to checkbox 50. Let's say that's right here. And then uh, for it to analyze whether each of those checkboxes are checked. And then if it is checked, I think it needs to put uh, zero euros, and if it is not, it's going to be uh, 0.5 euros. Or if it is checked, it's 0.5. Something like this. Anyway, there's a sample code here. He just did the first couple. So if either of these are checked when the procedure runs, it runs the 0.50 uh, euros, otherwise zero euros, and uh, etc. But he wanted to loop because it'd be a lot easier than coding that forever and ever and ever. So the sample codes are here. So we're in the user form, excuse me, let me back up. To get into the Visual Basic Editor, of course, you hold your thumb on the Alt key and you press F11, so Alt F11. And now we're here in the Visual Basic Editor. You might see a lot of uh, worksheets here. Uh, he had created a user form, of course, to do that. You click this drop down and go to User Form. And when you're in a new user form, you might want to click on the View and go to Toolbox. And so with your Toolbox is where you can add uh, labels such as label one, two, three here, or the text boxes and the check boxes. You can just drag it over there anywhere you want. Anyway, moving on, assuming you know how to get this user form the way it is, let's go ahead and look at the code that he had here. So for the command button one click event, so if you clicked on that button, it would say if uh, me dot checkbox one dot value is true, me of course always refers to the current object or container that you're in. In this case, we're in the container called user form one. So you don't have to type user form one, you can type the word me. So if this current user form and the checkbox called checkbox one is true, meaning it's checked, then the this text box that corresponds to it should be uh, 0 0.50 euros. Otherwise, uh, we, we type the word else, otherwise make it zero, right? So, and then that's the end of that first if statement. And then you did the same thing with the text box 2 and text box 52, the exact same thing. So it looks like when he has a check box number 1, to get the text box that corresponds to it right next to it, you add 50 to the number 1 to get 51. Right, and check box 2, 2 plus 50 is 52. Oh, text box 52. So we're going to need to know that pattern at least in a second. So he says, we continue it this way from uh, checkbox uh, 50, uh, excuse me, checkbox 1 to checkbox 50, all the way to text box, I guess, 51 to 100. And then a new pattern will emerge whenever we get to the later checkboxes. So we might do a couple different loops, but let's go ahead and get started on our, the way we're going to do it. We're going to do a simple for next loop, I think. So we're going to do a, a new sub, and we'll just call this uh, loop fun and hit enter. So of course to create a, a sub procedure you always type the word sub and then hit a space bar and then type the name that you want to give it and hit enter and you're good to go. It automatically will create this. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a simple loop. So I did a comment using an apostrophe at the beginning of that sentence. Simple loop is we're going to do a 4x so we're going to say for x is going to be equal to 1 all the way to 50. So 4x equals 1 to 50. And then at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and say next x. Now I'm going to hit my up arrow, and I'm going to hit tab, because I know I want to indent everything inside of this current loop. I want to indent it, and I want to keep it indented so it's easier for me to read when the beginning and the ending boundaries of my uh, for next loop. So anything inside there is going to be indented. All right, so let's see here. Here's the trick to looping through controls in a user form. You can refer to the user format by its name. Again, user form one in this case, in this instance, or you can use me. Okay, either way, uh, we're going to use me dot instead of user form one dot. But the important thing to take here is that you can use me dot controls. And me.controls literally knows what ActiveX controls like buttons and labels and checkboxes, and you can refer to them by their name. Now, what's significant about that is uh, let's do me.controls 
and let's open up our parentheses. Now it's waiting for an item name. And so we'll use a string of text to give our item name. So a string of text goes in quotes. So me.controls, in this case, let's, let's analyze, uh, let, let me backtrack here. I'm gonna say if space, so if me.controls, and let's talk about the one that we did earlier. We did uh, checkbox, we have to spell it correctly, checkbox, and let's do an ampersand. We're gonna join the static text checkbox to a dynamic number. What's the number? That's right, X. So X, remember every time we loop through, X is first is gonna be one. So this will say checkbox space, or checkbox one. Then the next loop, X will be equal to two, all the way up to 50, it'll be equal to two. So this will say checkbox two, right? So let's close it up with an ending parentheses. So now it says if me.controls checkbox one, or if me.controls checkbox two, etc. we're gonna say if that equals true, I'm essentially emulating the code that he did up here. So if that is true, then that means if that checkbox dynamically is uh, checked, is true, then I will do the same thing. We're going to say me.controls. So I'm not typing me.textbox102 and then me.textbox100 and whatever. We're going to do me.controls. Same thing here, text box. And let's do an ampersand. And what's the number for that text box name? Well, it's going to be whatever x is plus 50. Remember? We talked about that earlier. So the value for that one is going to be equal to, and I'm going to put a 1 as a, so I don't get an error, but I'm not going to keep the number 1. I'm going to replace it with copy and paste that. And I'll say else, and I'll copy and paste this, but instead it'll be 0 euros if it's not checked. So 0, dot zero, 0, and then we'll do our backspace end if. Okay, so that's the first thing. Let's go ahead and try that. And first of all, if I hit F8, um, so if I hit F8, let's see here. Oh, I didn't assign it to our new uh, loop. Let's go ahead and go here. So on the command button, I click. Let's go ahead and tell it that we want to call the uh, procedure called loop fun. So let's type loop fun. And we'll just tell it to exit the sub because we don't want to actually do any of this stuff anymore. If we exit here, it won't continue running, right? So let's do that. I'll put a breakpoint here so we can uh, we can go slowly with our F8 key. So here we are. X is, is empty until I hit F8, and now it's one. And each time I loop through and get to the next X part, X is going to grow a number until it's 50, and then it'll stop. So if me.controls checkbox one is true, is it? No. Then it goes to the else, which is to make text box x plus 50. x plus 50 is what? 51. So this is text box 51. It's going to be equal to that. And this must be text box 51. So if I hit F8, it runs that line. And sure enough, that did work. So let's run it all the way through. OK, it looks like. Weird, it looks like uh, 1 through, I guess, 25 is here, and then 26 through 50 is here instead of the way you think it is. But that's all right. It's probably the way he wanted it, right? So let's check some random ones, make sure this is analyzing whether they're true or not. So watch it. I'm going to hit the code. And oops, let me take the break point out. Let me hit F5. Looks like it's working. All the ones that are checked are becoming equal to 0 0.50 euros. Cool. Now the next part we want to do, if we're just going to be as complete as possible, is in the same uh, macro, we would do another loop. And let me just copy it over here. And this time we would be going to from 51 to, I think, 100. And then we'd be doing something else here. So let's, let's look. Um, from checkbox 100 and text box 150, all the way to 150, okay. So yeah, that sounds right. But then the value, if it's checked, is going to be 12.525 euros. Um, I'll assume that this was a mistake, leaving it the way the other one was. And we'll assume that he wanted it to be this bigger number for all of them and not alternating every other checkbox, because that would just be confusing. We could do it. We could definitely do it. But I don't want to do that right now, because it wasn't explicitly requested. All right, so 
let's see if this works. So 51 and then 51 plus 50 for the text box name. I think the pattern remains. I actually should do it. So there's our second loop. We'll analyze the bigger numbers of checkboxes with a different number in the euros. So let's see here. We'll check this one and this one, which we know are going to be 50.50. And then we'll check this one and this one, which should be 12 point whatever. So let's see here. It doesn't seem to have worked the same this way. Let's see. We'll put a breakpoint there. But first of all, we need to make sure that these names are the same. So this one is textbox 51. This one is textbox 201. Okay, now I see what's going on. So the textbox 201. Um, and this one here, text box 76, 176, 226. Well, that's interesting. Well, let's see what happens if we, um, let's see what happens if we, some of these are clearly uh, invisible. Let's just see what happens if we make all of these visible. I'm just going to go ahead and select all of them, change the visibility pro property to true. So every single one of those should be visible now whenever we open it now. All right, some of those were hidden, and I'm sure that was on purpose, but I just want to make sure that this checkbox is putting 12.525 uh, in something. And it is, it's just that the names I was given were wrong. So instead of uh, being here, like I thought it was going to be, it's going to some text box that was invisible previously. So uh, I would imagine that this one and this one and this one would affect, yes, would affect these. Okay, so really we just need to use the correct starting point for the, the name of the, check, or the text box. Um, and uh, anyway, I hope that helps somebody. If you use me.controls, and uh, you can essentially use a concatenation technique where you take the word text box or the word checkbox and then you ampersand or concatenate that into whatever the number is as long as you have your text boxes numbered in a similar manner. Um, so as long as they're sequential and you can control that pretty easily then you could take a vast number of these checkbox uh, and text box combinations and link them together. Thanks for watching, guys, and God bless.